What's happening guys, Scott from Hornet's Nest and welcome back to episode six of Tutorial Tuesday. It is so good to see you. And today is the final lesson of Arduino basics because next episode we are downloading DCS BIOS and we are making our first flights and panel come to life. So what are we learning today? We are learning what are variables, why do we need them, why are they so important? And to help with that, I'm gonna teach you how to read the on or off state of a switch and it is real simple because that's really what our flight sims are is just a collection of switches that we need to know how to read. So to get into this, let's get back into the Arduino IDE that we downloaded last episode. So a quick refresher on what we've done. We've got the void setup, which is at the top of the code here. And that is where you initialize the Arduino telling it how you want it to behave. And then you've got the void loop where all that code in there runs repetitively and pretty much doesn't stop. And last episode, we told an LED to turn on and off using the function digital right. We said digital right to pin 13 high, turn it on, wait 250 milliseconds, digital right pin 13 low, wait 250 milliseconds, rinse and repeat. And you can see pin 13 connected to the LED is flashing here. But let's say we wanna build this circuit. And what we've got here is a LED connected to pin six through a 330 ohm current limiting resistor. And we wanna turn that on and off at a certain frequency. Well, to do that, we would have to go and replace every 13 with the number six. Now for us, that's actually not too hard because we've only got three iterations of six. Six is an output six turns high, six turns low. But you can imagine if we had 100, 200 lines of code all with the number 13 in it, there could be different reasons why we have 13 written. It could be the pin 13, it could be 13 milliseconds, it could be 13 meters, we just don't know. And that's where variables come in. So what is a variable? Well, a variable is a storage container. It holds bits of data such as numbers, words, true or false statements, Think of it as a labeled box that allows you to keep track of bits of data. That's what we're doing. We wanna keep track of bits of data in an easy and efficient way. So we've got two types of numerical variables. We've got integers, which are your counting numbers. One, two, three, four, five. And you can go backwards from zero as well. Negative one, negative two, negative three. All your whole numbers are integers. And every number in between those are floating numbers, such as 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, all your decimal points are counted as floating numbers. So why is that important to us? Well, instead of trying to remember this green LED is on pin six, we can call a variable green LED and every time we reference that now, Arduino in the back end will convert that to the number six. So how do we go and write this in Arduino? Well. The question is, where do we write it within Arduino? We know the setup only runs once and that initializes all the pins and other functions of an Arduino. But we don't really need to run a variable. We just need to tell Arduino, hey, this is the variable. So we're not gonna run it in setup. Well, if we know we don't need to run a variable, it's not gonna go in the loop either. So there's only one other option and that is outside the code. So let's go and put our variables at the top. It's the first thing Arduino reads and it's easy for us to remember where to put it. We want to identify the type of variable and we're going to be writing an integer because we want to replace pin six with an easy to remember name. Int for integer, it goes to a nice bluey green color. The name of the variable, we're going to call it green LED equals six. There we go. We've just written our first variable. A green LED is attached to pin six. So what we've got to do now is replace all of our sixes with green LED. You can imagine that if we had a full functional cockpit at the moment with 200 odd switches and we had to try to remember all those numbers, it would be absolutely confusing. So variables make real easy work of this. You don't want to hard code numbers into your code. It's, it's a bind to try to debug it. It's a bind to fix it. It's an absolute nightmare. So why, even if we're writing four lines of code, why make it hard for ourselves? Let's go here and change our delay times to be a variable as well. How do we create it? 
int for an integer because it's a whole number. The name, let's call it delay time. Using bumpy text, don't forget to use bumpy text, it's easy to read. Equals, and let's say we want it to go on for 350 milliseconds. Flash a bit slower. Now, all we've got to do is now type delay time and delay time. There we've got it. So let's have a quick look at what Arduino is doing here and what it's reading, because if you can understand what Arduino is reading, then you're going to understand how to fix it if it's not working. We've got a setup saying that the green LED is an output. Arduino is going to change green LED to six. We are writing to the green LED high. We are delaying it by delay time, which is 350 milliseconds. We are digitally writing to green LED as well to go low. And then we are delaying the delay time again of 350. You can press upload and it goes. And you can now see that we have stopped flashing on 13 and we have now transferred all the data to our actual green LED. That's pretty cool. So now that we know what a variable is, let's go and learn something new and how to read the switch state of a digital input. Let's unplug this here so it's not flashing and let's go and use one of these small tactile switches that are in our little electronics kit and they are the type that have the pins that bend towards each other. Now, if you're like me and you didn't know how to use these switches or which legs to connect up, the easiest way to remember is the pins that point to each other are already connected. It's the pins that run parallel are the ones that will connect when you push the push button in and short the connection. So when you pop this on a breadboard, you want the pins that bend towards each other in the same column. And now we wanna go and push that nicely into the breadboard to get a good connection. And we wanna go and connect one of the legs to pin 15. And we wanna connect the other set of legs to another ground and we'll just use the blue one. There we go. So what we've got is a push button connected to pin 15 and then we'll reconnect our LED to pin number six. That way we don't see it flashing all the time. Well, now that we know what variables are, what do you think the first thing we're gonna do is? Let's assign a pin to that input. Well, we're using a whole number. So we're gonna use a integer and we're gonna call it push button equals 15. We wanna set that button up and instead of an output, we want it to be a input because we're reading from it. But now with digital pins, and if you're not going to be using complex PCBs or your own circuitry for pull up and pull down resistors, use Arduino's internal pull up resistor. Quick thing on what pull up resistors do when the switch is open and the circuit isn't all connected, it will pull that pin up to read five volts or higher and then when you push the button, it closes the circuit or shorts it, it will short it to ground, reading zero volts or low. So we wanna go and define it as pin mode. Now we don't have to remember what pin we set it to, we know that we've got a push button in the circuit. So instead of writing pin 15, we can write push button, and we want it to be input underscore pull up. That is gonna tell Arduino the push button is a input using the pull up resistor. Let's go and delete all that code there. And just press upload. That way we can reconnect pin six without it flashing at us. There we go. So we know that when we digitally write to the pin or the LED, we write digital write where it's going and what we wanna to write to it. We just do the opposite for digital read. We use digital read brackets what we're reading from. Push button. See how we didn't have to remember that it was on 15? We just know it's the push button. When you get your cockpit up and running, 
It's digital read battery switch, digital read the engine crank switch. It's going to be so much easier than remembering how many pins you've connected them to. If we go and press upload, look what happens. It successfully compiles and uploads it because we've done nothing wrong here. Digital read push button. But it's a bit redundant because Arduino is holding all the secrets. We haven't one told it where to push that little bit of information from and how do we get to see that information? So what we've got to do is write another variable to store that little piece of data in. So why don't we go here and we're only going to be getting ones or zeros from a digital input. So one or zero is a whole number. So it's a integer still. We will find time much later on to work with floating values, but for now, we're just going to use integers. Int, let's call this one button value. But we don't really know what to write to it. We don't know what to store. Well, if you're not going to store anything and you're going to let Arduino store to it and you're now really using it as a storage container, you just finish it off with a semicolon and let Arduino do the rest. So now we can say in the loop, button value equals digital read push button. We are reading the push button and storing it as a value. It's going to read it as a one or a zero. When the button is pushed, it's going to read it as a zero because it's connecting the entire circuit to ground. And when it's released, it's going to read it as a one connecting it to the five volt pull-up resistor. So knowing that if it's gonna read five volts or zero volts, we don't even need complex serial monitors to see what it's reading because we can go and digitally write that signal to our LED so we can have a visual representation of what that button's doing. So let's go here, digital write. Where do we want to write it to? We don't, I've even forgotten what pin it's connected to now. All I know it as is green LED. What do we want to write to it? Well, we know high or low is an option and Arduino will count a one as high and a zero as low. So why don't we, instead of writing high and low, just write button value. There we go. You can press Control T to format it, make it look nice. And what we did before, let's go and read what Arduino is interpreting as, and then that way we know we can debug it or fix it if it doesn't work. We've got a green LED connected to pin six. We have a delay time of 350. Well, we don't really reference delay time in this code, but I'm gonna leave it there to show you it doesn't matter if it's not referenced, it's got no effect on the code. We've got a push button connected to pin 15 and we have a button value that is ready to receive data. We have a green LED that's an output and we have a push button that is an input connected to the pull up resistor. For all your digital switches, push buttons, toggles, all of that, if you're not going with pull up or pull down external resistors, you do need to use a internal pull up from Arduino. Now in the loop, the button value equals the digital read of the push button. It then stores that bit of information and the next line says, digitally write to green LED the value of the button. So we don't even need to see the circuit, but we can say when the circuit is open, we are expecting the green LED to turn on. When we short the switch or connect the contacts, we're expecting the LED to turn off because it's gonna read a zero. So let's go and upload that. Look at that. So we said the switch is open. We're expecting the LED on. We push the button in and it turns off because it is grounding the pin that the button is connected to and it's reading it as a zero. We don't have the LED and the switch connected. We are purely sending states. But what if I wanted it to be when I push the button the LED turns on, and when I release the button, the LED turns off. Well, we're kind of limited to an internal pull-up resistor, but we can smartly code Arduino to write the inverse or the opposite. So how do we do that? 
button value equals the digital read of the push button. This is where we want to do it. Well, all you got to do is at the beginning of digital read, put an exclamation mark. That is Arduino's way of reversing it. It's like an Uno reverse card. It now reads button value equals the inverse of digital read. And now it stores it up here, button value equals the inverse. We had digital writing green LED with the new button value. So let's go run that and send that to the code. Beautiful. The switch is open. It's reading a zero. We're not actioning it. The LED is off. We go and push it. The LED turns on. Now it's a bit more intuitive. It's almost like a switch is in the plane. I want you to remember that, that inverse sign because in next episode, you'll find that DCS BIOS uses that a lot in its backend coding to make it look intuitive and how we want it to act. Generally, we want to turn a switch on and send a one, turn the switch off and send a zero. So yeah, button pushed, turns on, button off, turns off. That's pretty cool. So I think we got a good, a good bit out of today. We learned what variables are, why they're important. You could see how easy it is to change it. Let's just show you one last version of how easy this is to change. Let's move our button to 19 and our LED to pin two. We don't have to go and remember where we've written it. All we got to write here is green LED two and our push button it's now 19, Arduino does the rest. Send, uploading, 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 done, button on, button off. As simple as that. That's pretty cool. Today, we learned what variables are and why they're important. We can just see how easy it is to change pins on the fly and not have to try run through multiple lines of code. We learned what an integer was or your counting numbers or your whole numbers. Then we learned what a float was. We also learned how to read an input from a switch that is a digital input. It's reading a one or a zero, a on or an off. We also learned a new pin mode today, and that was input pull up, Arduino's internal pull up resistor. So I hope you got something out of today because that is the last episode of Pure Fundamentals. Anything from now on, we're gonna learn with DCS BIOS running, actually on the job training with the flights and panels, and getting them up and running. So as always, enjoy your flight simming, stay safe, enjoy having a bit of a play around with the code that we've just written, enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll see you next episode.